Good Thursday, everyone. I'm Severus Webb, and welcome to Conversation Daddy News. Glad you all could be with us. Well, we made it over the hump, and we're in the home stretch toward the weekend. But of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Thursday. I have a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By. And in today's entertainment spotlight, you guys can be part of my conversation with Arlana Darkens Drury. She's the host of The O Show, but also the co-founder of The Shine Awards. We'll talk to her about the way that they are spotlighting the work of teens and how you can be involved. You don't want to miss that. Enjoy today's broadcast. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Thursday headlines. In national news, Biden's speech takeaways, more conciliation and conflicts as the Associated Press. The State of the Union address tends to have a ritual rhythm, grand entrance, applause, platitudes, policies, appeals for unity, real or imagined. President Joe Biden checked those boxes, says the Associated Press, and a few more during his speech to a joint session of Congress on Tuesday night. In part, he seemed to be laying the foundation to run for a second term. We've been sent here to finish the job, he said. Biden made calls for unity and tried to emphasize conciliation over conflict, easier to do in this rarefied setting, seemingly impossible to sustain in such divided times. Some of the Associated Press's takeaways from the primetime address are these. Biden's speech almost defiantly ignored the bitter divisions between Republicans and Democrats and his own low standing with the public. He returned repeatedly to common ground, making the case that both parties can back U.S. factories, new businesses being formed, and the funding of 20,000 infrastructure projects. When Biden hit each of these themes, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy politely clapped. He even stood to applaud at one point. It's a sign that Democrats and Republicans can at least agree to a shared set of goals, even if they have different views of how to get there, says the Associated Press. In the midterm election campaign, Biden warned of Republican extremists. On Tuesday night, he betrayed them as partners in governance during the first two years of his presidency. But then came a Biden comment that generated boos and hoots from Republicans. Biden said some in the GOP were bent on cutting Social Security and Medicare. That sparked a raucous back and forth that seemed more in line with the reality of the actual relationship between the two parties as the Associated Press. The president brought back an idea from last year to put a minimum tax on billionaires so they don't pay a lower rate than many middle class households. Biden had pitched a 20% tax on the income and unrealized financial gains of households worth $100 million or more. The administration estimated it would generate $360 billion over 10 years that would, in theory, help fund some priorities and possibly reduce the deficit. But Biden's tax plan might be more about scoring political points. He couldn't get it past Senator Joe Manchin in the Senate last year. The president was straightforward in saying he would stop airlines from charging fees in order to sit families together, saying that children were being treated like luggage. In more national news, primary care a hot target, CVS spends $10 billion on Oak Street. Big money is pouring into primary care clinics as the nation's health care giants hunt for ways to cut costs by keeping people healthy. CVS Health said Wednesday that it will spend about $10.6 billion to buy Oak Street Health, which runs clinics that specialize in treating Medicare Advantage patients. The acquisition comes just three months after a nearly $9 billion investment by rival Walgreens in Village MD's acquisition of the urgent and primary care chain Summit Health City MD. And that deal was announced two months after CVS said it would spend $8 billion to acquire home health care provider Signify Health. The money being spent tells of a rapid expansion in value-based care as approach to medicine that is growing popular with bill payers like the federal government's Medicare program. It essentially rewards doctors for keeping patients healthy instead of paying them for every service they perform. In more national news, toxic gases connected to Ohio trail derailment cause concern. Days after crews released and burned toxic chemicals transported by a wrecked train in Ohio, residents remain concerned about the toxic substances that could be lingering in their evacuated neighborhoods. About 50 cars, including 10 carrying hazardous materials, derailed in a fiery crash on last Friday in East Palestine, according to rail operator Norfolk Southern and the National Transportation Safety Board. Vinyl chloride is associated with increased risk of liver cancer and other cancers, according to the federal government's National Cancer Institute. In sports, LeBron James makes NBA history on a star-filled night in L.A. Bronny James stepped over to his dad's locker and played the phone video he had taken of Tuesday's biggest moment. The NBA's new scoring king tipped his head back in a rich, full-throated laugh 
when the audio revealed Bronny had anticipated that the historic basket would come on a fadeaway jumper. That's tough, that's tough, LeBron James said. That's funny. For James, the greatest cost of nearly two decades in the NBA is a family time he misses. When he reached arguably the greatest individual basketball milestone of all by passing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's career scoring record, James's mother, wife, and three children all witnessed the coronation. And finally, in business news, stocks fall on Wall Street, giving back some recent gains. Stocks fell on Wall Street Wednesday, giving back some of their recent gains, as uncertainty about interest rates and inflation continues to reign. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By. Enjoy. Good Thursday, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Words That Choose to Live By. It's time to show that you appreciate the power of grace by not allowing the past to continue to hold you hostage. The key has been given to you already to live a life free from guilt, shame, and regrets. But now it's time for you to use it. Have an amazing Thursday. We are part of my conversation coming up with Arlana Darkins Drury in today's Entertainment Spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daddy News. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Arlana Darkins Drury, the host of The O Show and co-founder of The Shine Awards, rejoined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about how The Shine Awards is shining a spotlight on the work of teens. Here's a bit of our conversation. Arlana, glad to have you back on with us. Thanks again for the time. Thank you so much for having me again. Hey, glad to do it, and congratulations on the O Show. We, we did not we didn't talk about that last year when we had you on, but I really enjoyed being able to watch some of the episodes as I was prepping for our segment for today. So, Orlando, this is such an important topic. As I mentioned, young people, unfortunately, uh, you know, they, they kind of get grouped together, not always in a positive way. Why were the, the Shine Awards created? So the Shine Awards was created because the media doesn't portray a balanced representation of young people. So you are correct. Anytime something's reported, whether it's graffiti or violence or whatever in our communities, most of the time our first thought is it's probably a bunch of kids. And so the Shine Awards, we got put in motion um, to help change the narrative of young people and create a public platform where we can celebrate their accomplishments uh, to date. What I love about this, Alana, is that it allows young people to know not only, of course, that there are some positive examples out there as as the Shine Awards able to spotlight, but also give others something to be able to aspire toward, right? I love that aspect as well. So if we know someone in our area that we know is a great example, how can we nominate them for the Shine Awards? Yeah, so nominating is super easy. Um, You visit our website, which is the shineawards.org we spell shine with a Y Um, the deadline is Valentine's Day uh, midnight and if you have questions you can call us at 1-855-55-SHINE S-H-Y-N-E Cyrus Webb Conversations Daily News we thank you all for attending this edition of Conversation Daily News. We'll be back on tomorrow to wrap up this week. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Now let's go make a great one.